Well, morning, welcome to Wake Up Well. Uh, today we start a new series thinking about what it is to be in covenant in Christ as the people of God uh, as we enter this new kind of time, this new season as us, for us as a church. Uh, we're thinking really carefully this autumn 2021 about uh, who we are in Christ, what we're supposed to be doing, why on earth we are church together and, and so on. So I'm going to be reading to you the account of Moses talking to the people of God before they've made it to the promised land. They're right on the edge of it, um, but they haven't made it there for 40 years. And Moses recounts some of their history and their story. So we are in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 6 to 11. And he says, Moses says this, for you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his special treasure. The Lord did not set his heart on you and chose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of all nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you and was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. And that's why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. Therefore, you must obey all these commands, decrees and regulations that I'm giving you today. And he goes on to, to give them the law and the Ten Commandments. So that's a pretty good start, isn't it? If you think, just think about verse 6 uh, and imagine this is you, because it is. You are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his special treasure. That is an amazing promise. Isn't that a fantastic kind of words? Isn't that the kind of words that we all want to hear? Um, it, it, the, the living God declares this over you and over me because we're in friendship with him. And uh, as we think about our identity in Christ, we think about the word covenant. And everything changes when you and I get covenant, this idea that's, that runs all the way through the Bible. It's one of the biggest themes in the Bible. It's a, the, the covenant is this done deal when, when you become, when you become a follower of God, you, um, which has been the case since the days of Abraham, you enter into the family of God. Uh, you become a member of the royal family of God and you get the privileges and the position and the power and the promises and the purpose of God into your life. You get to share the privileges and the purposes of God's life as part of your life, my life. Covenant's an incredible, empowering identity truth. But with rights come responsibilities, yeah? With rights come responsibilities. With favour comes an expectation of faithfulness. When God lavishes favour on you, he expects us to remain faithful to him. That's also what covenant is about. Covenant is a two-way agreement between two parties. You know, the, the modern version is a marriage still. Um, that's where we use the word covenant. And, and that's when you jump in 100% behind one person and you promise to serve them and to be for them, you know, and to remain faithful to them as long as you both shall live. It's the same idea with covenant to God. So verses uh, 9 to 11, uh, Moses says this, Understand that the Lord your God is, is God. He's a faithful God. He keeps his covenant to a thousand generations and he lavishes his love on those who obey his commands. Brilliant. That's, that's a wonderful side of the covenant. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him, who don't keep that covenant or enter into that covenant. Therefore, you must obey these commands that I'm giving you today. You must obey. The Christian life that Jesus maps out for us is one of revelation, of who God is, and therefore who we are in Christ, and of absolute obedience to Christ. He calls for absolute obedience as much as he says, listen, imagine this. 
God is real. He's revealed to you and he wants friendship with you. He also wants obedience from you and me. It's a, it's a radical picture that Jesus maps of laying down our lives, of, of serving Jesus' agenda, of purifying our hearts, our minds and our bodies, in other words what we do, and our behaviour, purifying it by deliberate action. So God says, be holy because I am holy. You know, get yourself right because I am. Those are my standards and that's what it means to be in covenant with me. Uh, so covenant to God means deliberately keeping his ways, devoting ourselves 100% to him and to his holiness. In other words, covenant is always this two-way thing. There's this lavishing of love and there's this faithfulness, faithful love in return from you and me, his people. So the good news is, as we offer that level of faithful love, that level of obedience, Christ's love empowers us to actually be able to live this way. You couldn't do it outside of the Holy Spirit and his strength. You just couldn't. You can't keep up. Uh, uh, but the good news is, you know, verses 8 to 10 again, he, he is, he, Christ is faithful, God is faithful. He lavishes love on those who obey him and love him. And it's from that love that you and I are able and empowered to live this way. So the love is the power. It's the power to change. It's the power to commit in this relationship. So folks, love is a uh, covenant is this beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift to be called the friends and the family of the living God, isn't it? It's an exceptional opportunity and privilege. And with this favour comes this expectation of faithfulness. With great favour comes an expectation of great faithfulness in thought, in word and in deed. So may you and I remember who we are and whose we are today in covenant with the living God and may we also be blessed to remain faithful to him in our lives and in our lifestyle today. And I bless you this day.